Good evening, and welcome to the Ebenezer Church, Church of God, God Wednesday, Wednesday Night, Night Bible, Bible study. study. I'm your host and teacher, Minister Mark Walters. I give honor to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, uh, who is the head of my life and who has been leading us as we have taken this journey um, through the books of the Old Testament. Um, we're currently in the, the book, book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. We're currently at Deuteronomy chapter 14. I um, want to give honor to our awesome pastor, the Bishop Oliver Sabrine and family, uh, First Lady Rose, uh, the number one PK in the land, Sharona. I want to give honor also to our Ebenezer family, my own family, my wife, Donessa, our three our lovely kids, Emmanuel, Jeremiah, and Angelina, my beautiful daughter. Um, special honor to all of you who are dialing in from across uh, Maryland, the nation, and abroad. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all those who are joining us by way of um, Jamaica um, and South America, um, north of here, up in um, New York, New York, New York City, and all over this beautiful United States and all over the world. God bless you. From Ebenezer from here in Maryland, we want to just give you a shout out. We want to ask you if you if you are hearing something that you like and you'd like to support this um, this local church, we ask that you would like us and subscribe us. Uh, so right there on on the page at the bottom, you can subscribe and you can press the like button, which is the thumbs up button, and then you can click on the bell notification to be notified uh, when we are live streaming. Um, please drop a line in the chat uh, where you're listening from, as well as your prayer request. Amen. And also, please remember those of you who are uh, local that we're going to, um, I'm going to be on the prayer line after uh, the Bible study. So I'm going to be on the prayer line after the Bible study for those of you who are local and can drop in on the prayer line. God bless you. Um, so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer even right now, and we're going to ask God to just have his way on the live stream tonight, and we're going to pray for the blessings of the Lord. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we bless you. We praise you. We lift up your holy name. We give you all the praise, God. We magnify your holy name. We worship you. We glorify you, Lord God. We say that you are Lord. We say that you are God. We say that you are King of Kings. We say that you are Lord of Lords. We just ask you into our live stream tonight. We ask you, God, that you would touch it, that you would bless it. Lord God, that the Holy Spirit would just move out, Lord God, and, and just touch lives and touch hearts, Father. In the name of Jesus, we're praying for uh, just a, an outpouring of your Spirit. We ask you, God, even as I prayed uh, week after week, that you would just have mercy upon us, oh God. And we, re we rebuke this virus, God. We send it back to the pit from whence it came, Lord God. We're speaking healing. Uh, we're speaking restoration, Lord God. We're speaking, Lord God, uh, that you would do a wondrous work in this land. Father, I, I, even as the enemy had meant to, to push the church under, Lord God, with this uh, virus, Lord God, but I believe the church is coming out from under, Lord God. And I pray, and I know, Lord God, tonight that we are, we are blessed and we are highly favored, Lord God, and you're going to make a way for us, we ask. Have your way now, I pray, Lord God. Speak life, speak joy, speak hope. Oh God, touch these words that I'm about to speak tonight, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that your Holy Spirit would guide me and lead me, oh God, I pray, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, as I pray every week, Lord God, that I would decrease and that you would increase, God, because no one came to hear from me, but they came to hear what thus saith the Lord. So have your way, I pray tonight, Lord God. I just move in a mighty way. I pray just let your 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 word go forth and the work of God be carried on, Lord God. I give you praise. We thank you for all that you have done, Lord God. When the enemy meant for evil, God, you've turned it around and you've made it work for good. I give you the praise and I give you the glory and I give you the honor tonight, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. I love you. I praise you and I bless you tonight. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So tonight, um, our broadcast is going to be dealing with Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 14 um, tonight. So let's jump right in. So we're going to start with, of course, our background. Um, and Deuteronomy um, 14 is going to be talking about the law against pagan practices as it relates to the children of Israel at this time. We're going to go into some dietary laws. Some of them are controversial at this time, but we're going to talk about some of the dietary laws. We're going to look at some of the religious laws, and we're going to recap, and then we're going to call it a night. We should be here about 25, give me about 25 of your minutes, 
and we'll get through the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14. Um, God bless you, and let's get on our way. So the background, in this chapter, chapter 14, Moses once again, um, he's going to give instructions about pagan practices um, when they are coming into the new land. And we're going to go look at our, our map again. He gives laws concerning their diet. He expands religious laws as it relates to tithes and tithing. So if we look at our background again, as we as we do week after week, we see here, um, if I can get to it, um, we see that we are still over here, still here, still in the book of Deuteronomy on this side of Moab, and we're headed into the promised land as we get to the conclusion of Deuteronomy. But Moses is here, he's talking to the children of Israel, he's getting them prepared, he's reiterating the law that we have read both in Exodus and Leviticus. So uh, we're getting ready to go into the promised land. All right, so we're pressing on. All right, so chapter 14, verse one and two, you are the children of the Lord your God, you shall not cut yourself, he's telling them, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord had chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are up on the earth. What is that saying? So their walk was regulated by one principle. This is the overarching, the guiding principle throughout all of Moses' um, discourse with them, that Number one, you are the children of the Lord. And let me just kind of explain what that means. They were children, not by which we'll, we'll see in Matthew and, and also what Isaiah prophesied, um, that a virgin, uh, I, I show you a sign that a virgin shall, shall, shall bring forth a child and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Not that kind of children of the Lord. They are children by adoption, not by a virgin birth. They are children by adoption. So that means that God has, has brought them into the fold and into the family of God um, by his goodwill and his favor to them. So there was to be none of the pagan practices, um, such as cutting yourself um, and, and shaving the hair up here on your eyelashes and your eyebrows. Um, those things were done. Cutting up the hair was done to honor um, certain pagan deities. Uh, it was mostly done um, uh, as, a, as a way uh, of, of, of helping to, to help your loved ones get get past in the afterlife so it was done mostly for the dead as a way of of, of helping them to get um, through to where they need to get through in the afterlife none of that was actually happening <laughs> so what it was doing really it was just really um showing their allegiance to um certain um, pagan gods so the nations the nations in Canaan or the, 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 the lands in Canaan and the peoples in Canaan were an idol people and they um, had all these different outward signs uh, for their pagan God. So it was the custom in Canaan to cut the flesh, uh, to manifest sincerity in worship and earnestness in prayer to idol gods. We see this uh, um, in, in Book of First Kings, I think it's 18. Yes, Book of First Kings 18, where Elijah uh, was, was toying with the with the, the prophets on, on Mount Carmel. And he said, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, cry aloud. This is him talking um, to the false prophets about their gods. He says, cry aloud for he is a God. Either he is talking. So maybe your God was talking to somebody else. He has no time to listen to you. Or he's pursuing or he's in a journey or maybe he's sleeping and he must be awake. So he's telling them, He's, he's, he's just kind of jeering them um, because uh, as they were trying to um, get the fire to kindle upon the altar, it wasn't happening. And so Elijah began to just mock them. But look at what they did. This is instructive. And this is what um, God was warning his people against. But they cried aloud. This is, this is the false prophets. They cried aloud. They cut themselves after their manner with knives and landslides till the blood gushed out upon them. What they were trying to do was show their sincerity um, to their gods. And by, by cutting themselves, it was a sign that, hey, I'm sincere. I really am trying to 
um, get your attention. So listen to me. And that was their practices. And God is saying, no, 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 no. We're not doing any of that. He says, so you, and, and what he told them is that for you are a holy people unto the Lord your God. And the Lord had chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are up on the earth. So God is saying, I'm I'm making you are declared a holy people. And what that means is that you are set apart um, people unto the Lord your God. Um, the Lord had chosen thee to be peculiar. And again, that's just a reinforcement of the term that you are to be holy and that you are to be set apart um, unto God. So and he actually says, I favored you among all the nations that are upon the earth. So it, God has just designated them um, to be um, special, to be his people. Um, unto them were committed, like Paul says in the book of Romans, unto them were committed the oracles of God. So they were a special nation, a set apart um, people. So chapter 14, so now set apart people, there's got to be some differentiation and, and God is differentiating things now in just in even in terms of what they're going to eat and so we're, we're going to talk a little bit about what god says and again this is a, a reiteration of some of the dietary laws that we find in the book of leviticus i think it's leviticus um 10 or 11 um go, go and double check that but i believe that's in leviticus um 11. um so he, he talks to them about these dietary laws the queen beast so he says in chapter 14 3 through 6 and i also just combined in 21 because it's it's speaking in the same context he says thou shalt not eat any abominable thing these are the beasts which you shall eat the ox the sheep and the goat the heart and the roebuck and the fallow deer and the wild goat and the pigarg and the wild ox and the chamois and every beast that parted the hoof and cleaveth the cleft into two claws and chewed the cud among the beasts that that ye shall eat you shall not eat of anything that dies of itself in other, in, instead of doing that thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates that he may eat it or thou mayest sell it unto an alien for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seed or boil a goat kid in his mother's milk. So he speaks to them about the don't eat that which is abominable. So things which are abominable, um, one of the things we get from there which is abominable and also get from the book of Leviticus was anything that is dead. So you're not eat, you're not allowed to eat anything that is dead so if something um died of, of natural causes or some a other animal had attacked that thing and killed that thing um it's not your opportunity to say oh great this thing is already dead i don't have to hunt it down and kill it something has already hunted it down and killed it no no that is not what he sees so you you can't have that you can't eat that um and, and there are chief there are chief reasons um, the chief reason is that God was differentiating them amongst all the, the other nations. And so to be different, you have to be different. And so being different meant that you were different in even what you ate. You were different. You were different um, people. And the second thing was he was trying to, pre God knows ahead of time, what eating um, these abominable, unclean things would do to their bodies. And remember, he's trying to um, keep them all healthy, keep them all whole. If you eat something which is already dead, there's what? Bacteria, there's viruses, there's all those things that you could get. And since there's a camp of them, it's about two and a half million people now total, there's a whole camp of them. Can you imagine if there is some virus or some bacteria which broke out in the camp? Um, there, There is no, or there are no antibiotics at this time. There's nothing like that. So God has to protect the integrity of their bodies by having them follow very strict laws and also by having them follow very strict dietary laws he's also heading off possibly other types of diseases and things um, that even we ourselves now currently get because of what we consume somebody say hallelujah <laughs> so these 10 animals were allowable the ox the sheep the goat the heart the robot the fallow deer the wild goat the pie guard um was what in the Hebrew, that the translation really is the, the animal that leaps. So it's a leaper. And what uh, most people agree 
um, that that means that it's the white rump antelope, at, which was um, in the region at the time. So the wild ox or the chamois, um, with a goat or deer, or, or it's a goat or deer or sheep with red, red hair instead of wool. So it doesn't have the white um, wool that the um, sheep would have. It's actually just red hair um, that they had. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, don't eat anything that was already dead. That's a no-no. Um, and don't boil a goat kid in its mother's milk. So um, don't take the goat kid and just boil it or cook it again in the mother's milk. I'm going to look that one up. I'm going to do some research on that one. And we'll get back to you on next week um, with the explanation because that one was a little um, tough to um, to kind of parse. So, but we'll talk about that. I'll bring that as a special topic next week. Um, so the unclean beasts were, nevertheless, these you shall not eat of them that chew the cud uh, or of them that divide the cloven hoof as the camel and the hare and the coney, for they chew the cud but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean to you. And the swine, because they divided the hoof, yet chew it not the cud, it is unclean to you. You shall not eat of their flesh nor touch their dead carcass. Now, what's interesting when he talks about the animals that chew the cud, if I can go back here, uh, for instance, like an ox, the ox chews the, the cud. Um, when an animal chews the cud, um, like a cow, for instance, it, it passes through uh, four different chambers, or shall we say four different, some people call it four different um, stomachs, but it's not really four different stomachs, it's four different um, um, compartments that, that it passes through in its digestion. And when it chews it, it goes into the first chamber, and then it's there, and it's digested there, then it's passed back up, and then it's chewed again some more, and this is over a process of time, and then it goes through that process, then goes to the second stomach, and then it's chewed, it's, it's digested some more, it's, pass back up, it's chewed, and it goes through the rest of the system. And what that does is that the cow is able to extract all of the nutrients out of that grass. You ever wonder why the, the cow eats nothing but grass and drinks nothing but water, but it gains so much weight? It's because that it is, com all the food is complete, all the grass and the, and the, um, the vegetables or whatever it's eating in the fields, it's completely digested. All of it is completely digested. It takes um, six to eight hours for the cow to, to do that whole process of, of eating the grass, um, bringing it down, going through the, the, the four stomach, coming back up to the mouth and chewing it. And, it, and so all of that is a process and it takes about six to eight hours for all that process to um, for for grass to actually pass its way all the way through the cow and so by doing that all the nutrients are now part of that animal so the reason why he stresses you're going to eat the ones which chew the cud is because those animals their digestion is 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 holy and whole and complete. And so that now is able to pass along more nutrients into the person's body. So God is concerned with all of us and, and our whole body he's concerned with. Um, but there are some animals who do chew the cud where he says don't eat them. Um, and there are particular reasons why he, he states that. Um, <clears throat> one is the camel, <clears throat> one is the hare, one is the coney, which is a, it, it looks like a rabbit, <clears throat> but it's actually a relative of the hippopotamus or the rhinoceros. So in one of the ones which you all know about, everybody knows about is the swine. And chiefly, if I talk about the swine for a second, the, the, the issue with the swine, even though uh, swines, um, it, the issue with that is that they, um, they eat whatever is around them. So if you put a swine in a pig pen with poop and whatever, it's gonna eat some of that. And even as we say today, you are what you eat and you are whatever the thing that you eat, eats. And so imagine um, feeding on swine at a time like that where there's no type of antibiotics, there's no type of, um, of uh, medication in terms of helping to quell outbreaks and things like that. And the swine, because of how it's kept and what it eats and the fact that it's prone to eat anything, um, that would not be, if God is a wise God, that would not be something which is appropriate for someone to eat. 
that would most certainly cause an outbreak of disease. So these animals, um, for whatever reason, many of them carry different types of diseases. And God was saying, don't eat of these things because I don't want an outbreak um, in the camp of two and a half million people. Um, so that was the proposition behind, I believe, one of the reasons behind why God is so um, adamant about them not eating these particular animals. And he, then he talks about, and a similar thing goes with those things in the water. So he said you could eat of all that are in the waters, all that have fins and scales. So this is mostly talking about fish, like some of you who like your salmon and your goldfish and your sardines and these kinds of fish and your trout and those things. Wonderful um, fish. He said, they have fins and scales. But look at what he says. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales, you may not eat. It is unclean. And again, once again, you are what you eat and you are what the thing that you eat eats. So lobsters, crabs, shrimp, catfish, these things tend to be bottom feeders and they tend to eat things, the detritus, which is in the water. And those kinds of things could pass um, from them onto you. So God is, is trying to keep them all alive and keep them all healthy. He's not just saying these things um, to just demonstrate um, some some kind of, um, uh, he's not just saying these things to just you know, prove to show them that, hey, I'm the one making the rules and I can make them very arbitrary. There's a re there's reasoning behind these in terms of from dietary reasons why God is saying, don't eat these things, lobsters, crabs, shrimp, catfish. I'm not judging anybody today, <laughs> but understand that that's the reasoning behind why God is telling them at this time. So the other ones, which are um, free water fish or higher water fish, the salmon, the goldfish, sardines. I just put goldfish because I know there's some Caribbean people listening. Um, but those things, if they, they swim up higher in the water, and so the, the, the detritus that will fall all the way to the bottom, but these fish feed on other things which are um, at that level. So you don't find these fish as bottom feeders, and the things which are unclean tend to fall all the way to the bottom. So these other fish will be eating other smaller fish um, and sometimes, you know, different things um, that, that land in the water. These things will, will, will eat those things, but they're not at the bottom eating detritus is what the, um, the admonition is for. So similar thing with clean and unclean birds. So God is taking care of the things on the land, the things in the sea, and now the things in the air. Of all the clean birds you shall eat. Um, so... Um, these are birds, um, like things like canaries, uh, thing, birds that you can eat. Um, don't know if there were many canaries in Canaan, but there'll be birds like that that you can eat. But of these, um, and, and you'll find all of these, the, the, the types of birds um, that you can eat also in the book of Leviticus. And again, remember, uh, Moses is mostly reiterating the laws which are already um, been established from his his teaching in Leviticus and part of Exodus. So all of the clean birds you shall eat, but these are they of which you shall not eat. The eagle, can eat eagles, the ossifrage and the osprey, and the gleed and the kite and the vulture after his kind, and every raven after his kind, and the owl and the night hawk and the cuckoo and the hawk after his kind, the little owl and the great owl and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle and the cormorant and the stork and the heron after her kind, the lapwing and the bat and every creeping thing that flies is unclean to you. They shall not be eaten, but of all clean fowls you may eat. So all the birds you can eat except for eagles, ostrich, and the eagles are birds of prey. Ostrich is also a type of bird of prey. Osprey, gleeds, kites are all birds of prey. The vulture is something that eats um, things which are dead. And like I said before, you are what you eat, and you are what the thing that you eat eats. <laughs> so the vulture eats. Uh, vulture is a bird which cleans up. Um, the land after something is dead and it is particularly made to be able to digest um, certain types of bacteria and it's, and it's made in such a way that it can eat dead things and not get sick that's just the way god made them but god did not make us to eat vultures now ravens owls nighthawk cacao hawks uh, little owl great owl swan pelican 
Gear Eagles, Cormorant, Stark, Heron, Lapwings, and even as we're seeing today, the issues that um, surrounding bats and the types of uh, viruses and things that they have, God knew way ahead of time, let's not eat bats. Um, bats tend to have lots of different um, viruses and are known to house lots of different viruses. So just a sampling of some of the birds. Um, there's the ossifred, which is a bearded vulture. So he's a type of vulture. Um, you have the osprey, which is a, a seahawk. And again, um, these are birds of prey. You have the kite, look at the sharp talons and the, the sharp beak. These are types of birds of prey. Um, there's a gleed, and the gleed is more like a a, a, a set of birds and one of several birds of prey. So this is just a sampling of some of the unclean birds. Again, bearded vulture, which is a type of vulture. You have the seahawk. These are all birds of prey. You have the kite and finally the family of gleeds. So these are one of several birds. In fact, the kite is, is inside of the gleed um, family. Okay, we're pressing on. Let me get a glass of water here. All right, so we come to the part where uh, if you read through Deuteronomy 14 and you read the section on tithes, it will it will make you laugh in some regards, and it'll make it'll make some pastors nervous in some regards. Um, so we're gonna read through it and we're gonna look at what God is really saying um, in this uh, in these next couple of verses. So verse chapter 14, verse 27. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. So there was a first tithe. So what this section talks about is the three different types of tithes that you have um, in their land. So in Leviticus, um, talks of Leviticus 27, it talks about tithing and different types of tithes. And this again is a reiteration. Moses clearing some of this up and making it very um, obvious. Uh, so he said the first tithe, which we, we, we know from Leviticus, um, was to was to the Levites, and this was done yearly, and this was this benefited the tribe that had no inheritance. We know the story of the Levites. They were not, they did not have inheritance, and out of the Levite tribe would come the priest that would take care of the tabernacle at first, and then later on they would do the ministering in the temple. So this took care of that of that tribe and the priests within that tribe. Not all of the Levites, not all of the Levites were priests. So it's very important to understand that not the entire tribe wasn't, uh, were not priests. Um, some of them were priests and the, the priests were only allowed to be selected out of that tribe, but the entire tribe was not priests. So let's look at the second law of the tithe. And that's found in Chapter 14, 22 through 26. Uh, thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place where he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way, now look at what he says here, um, this is where some pastors have issues if you don't understand um, what tithe this is talking about. He's not talking about um, the first tithe. He's talking about the second tithe. And this tithe was for the individual himself and his household to cover expenses at the national feast. Uh, what national feast? Feasts like the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Passover, um, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Pentecost. So you'd have to bring a tithe also at that time. So what he's saying here is that if the way be too long for you, so that you are not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, so this is what God is saying. So if you're coming from your tribe and you're coming into the land which would eventually become Jerusalem, if that place is too far for you, um, which the Lord thy God shall choose. This is in verse 24 um, right here. Uh, if I can get my cursor there. So in verse 24 here, and if the way be too long for thee so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there when the Lord thy God had blessed thee, then is when you're going to take the tithe, remember the tithe was grain, um, fruits of the vine, and livestock. So then you can take that, 
sell it, turn it into money, bind up the money in your hand, which is just another way to say, just take the money and go into the place which the Lord your God shall choose. And you can take the money for that tithe and you can bestow it uh, for whatever you want. Basically it says for whatever your soul lusted after. You can buy more oxen, you can buy more sheep, you can buy more wine, you can buy strong drink for whatever, whatever your soul desired and you will eat there before the Lord thy God, and you will rejoice. So if the way when you're carrying that second tithe, um, if, it, if it was too far for you to bring it, then convert it to money, and then use the money to cover, um, to, to, to rejoice and to bless God. And, and notice that the money was still used um, for the people there to rejoice before the Lord thy God. So it wasn't really that you just... Um, I took the, the money and just spent it and bought frivolously, but that money was used um, for you and your family um, to just really um, enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Remember, that was the second tithe. And so again, the second tithe was for the individual himself and his household to cover expenses at the national feast. And it's, it was done so that there would be no excuse for not going. And this was also done yearly so again this is not the first tithe where the lord and we'll see that in malachi the lord had commanded them to bring the tithes into the storehouse we see that in leviticus um leviticus 27 where he talks about all the the tithes that they need to bring um that was um particularly talking about the first tithe. this is the second tithe and then we'll also talk about a third tithe so the third tithe was for the Levites, the strangers, the fatherless, the widows. And this was a special tithe that they brought um, for the poor. And this was given every third year. So years one, two, you didn't give it. On the third year, they gave it. So every year that, that was <laughs> divisible by three, they were to give this tithe. It was not to be taken to the place of worship, but it was distributed locally as it was needed. So at the end of three years, um, uh, Moses was saying, then you shall bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year, and you shall lay it up within your gates. So notice he says, lay it up within who? Within your gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow which are within thy gates shall come and shall eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand. So again, uh, this was the third tithe. This was the tithe that was for the Levites, the strangers, the fatherless and widows. So it's not only, so number one, you have to take care of the Levites and the Levite tribe because they had no inheritance. But what God has also shown them, and it's something that we have to do now to, is take care of strangers. At that time, a fatherless would be those where uh, the man of the house had died from usually from war and from fighting. And so these women were left to raise children and, and really they had no real means of, of really supporting themselves, except that one of their children had grown and become bigger and was able to take over the responsibilities um, in the family, and also for widows. So widows who had no husband and maybe no children at the time. So God had provided a provision. God had made a way. Isn't it wonderful that God provides a way uh, for everybody to, to, to chip in and help to take care of um, those who are less fortunate and those who have under... Um, poor or, or trying circumstance. So God never leaves out the poor. So what he says he's here, there's a, this was a special tithe for the poor. It was given every third year. It was done collectively. It was not to be taken to the place of worship, but it was distributed locally as everyone needed. So he had a way for this whole culture this whole nation to take care of everyone he took care of the, the levite tribe which is also the priest and that also took care of the things that was going on in the temple and all those tithes were brought into um, the temple the second tithe was when you were going to the national feast and you had to bring all your tithes and it became a little too burdensome for you then he said convert it to money because money you don't have to drag money money around with and lead money around, but you can just put it in your pocket. Uh, so you can take that when you get to the place of uh, of in Jerusalem at uh, 
you know, we, we will learn later, then you could spend it, buy more oxen, buy more sheep, um, buy, um, drink, whatever, and celebrate the, the goodness of the Lord that way. And then thirdly, the, this tithe was for um, those who are less fortunate among you. So hopefully that clears a lot of that up. And we're reached to the end of our night's lesson, just to recap. So God wanted them to be totally set apart from the other nations. God wanted them to demonstrate their holiness, or I call it their set apartness. That's not actually a word um, in practical ways by regulating what they ate. And it was done to show holiness, to show the difference between clean and unclean. And, and it was also done to protect them from harmful maladies, things that we have now, coronaviruses and things like that. Um, and, and thirdly, God wanted them to learn to give, to support the work of the temple was their first responsibility and to, su to, to support the Levite tribe was the second, and then also to support the poor and the unfortunate, because God never leaves out those that are less fortunate amongst us. Well, um, believers, friends, and family, that brings us to the end of tonight's lesson. Uh, I trust that you have been um, enriched. I trust that you're, 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 you have gathered something or gained something from um, the study of Deuteronomy chapter 14. I pray you will tune in again next week. And again, we're asking you to help to support this local ministry. Um, we'll be showing on the screen, you should see on the screen right now, um, ways to give through our Cash App or visiting our website, uh, different ways to give. So please support this local ministry if you have been blessed. Again, like and subscribe us and click the bell icon so that you can be notified of the um, upcoming um, broadcast. Again, if you don't know Jesus Christ, we'd like to offer an invitation to you tonight to accept Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us very plainly that if you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and you ask him to be your savior, then he would come into your life and he would come in in the fullness of the Godhead. So Christ and Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit it will just take residence in your heart. The Holy Spirit will dwell with you and lead you and guide you into all truth. And we're going to say this, this simple prayer with me. And uh, if you believe it in your heart, then the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come and dwell in your heart and God is going to save you. And what's, what salvation really means is that you are now saved um, from the destruction that is to come um, upon this land, the destruction that is going to come um, when you leave this earth. And so what save, salvation really speaks to is that now you are a child of God. And as um, Jesus says in John chapter 11, that if you believe on him, you'll never die. You've passed from death to life. And so we believe if you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you will never die again. And so, you know, death, you'll put you in the grave, but it's just a transition. And so you, you have now gained eternal life. Why don't you let me pray for you tonight? Let's pray and let's accept Jesus Christ tonight. And you have moved from death to life and you will live eternally with Jesus Christ. And then we'll talk some more about the things that are to come um, for those who know Jesus Christ. So let's just say this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner and that I need forgiveness. I ask you now, Lord God, to wash me, to cleanse me, to make me whole. Take over my life, take over my heart, take over my mind. I give it all to you tonight, Jesus. Please have your way. I believe that you lived, I believe that you died, and I believe you were raised again on the third day. And by the belief in my heart, and the confession in my mouth, tonight I am saved. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer and you believed it in your heart, why don't you send us, drop us a note in the chat line, and why don't you write to us at Ebenezer Church of God, 7550 Buchanan Street, and let us know what you have received tonight. God bless you. And from Ebenezer Church of God, we're signing off tonight. God bless you. We love you with the love of Jesus. Tell somebody that you love them and hug somebody and let them know that I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you and have a good evening tonight.